analog versus digital. In our previous lecture, we looked at two physical PLCs which had digital inputs and outputs and analog inputs and outputs. In this lecture, we're just going to go into further detail of what the differences are between analog and digital and where you can use them in your projects in industry. First of all, let's get started on analog signals. So analog signals are voltage signals which vary between a range. Typically analog signals are between 0 to 10 volt or 4 to 20 milliamps. In some cases you may come across some PLCs in the field which only support 0 to 10 volt ranges and not 4 to 20 milliamp ranges, whereas your sensors may only support 4 to 20 milliamp signals, you may need to do some conversion from your 0 to 10 volt to 4 to 20 milliamp ranges. So in order for us to do this, we can simply just introduce a resistor, which can then take our voltage signal and convert it into a milliamp single signal, which we can use for reading analog signals in our PLCs. So just to explain further how analog signals are actually used and how they do work in, for example, we'll look at a scenario where we've got three tanks. So what we'll do is we'll have a sensor, maybe a level sensor, which sits inside of this tank. And this represents our tank and this our actual level of liquid inside our tank. So in this case, we are about 50% full. We could possibly expect a 5 volt signal, which will come back, which will indicate 50% of the level of the tank. In this case, we are empty. So we could expect a 0 volt signal to come back. And here we are full, so we could expect a 10 volt signal to come back. So with these different levels, of signals in voltage terms, we can then convert them into values which we can use inside of our PLC in order to actually make some decisions. So that is basically how analog signals work. All you really need to know is that they are a way of measuring levels of things or values of sensors in the field and then they get represented in a voltage or a milliamp uh, range or value. So next, let's look at how analog signals are actually represented on the graph, just to give you more detail of how it actually works. So analog signals, as we said, can vary over time. So you'll see here we've got our voltages and our time. So analog signals can fluctuate between a maximum and a minimum value. In our case, this will be our zero volt value and our 10 volt value. As you can see, it can give us different readings based on whatever signals we are getting back from our sensors. Not all analog signals follow this exact sinusoidal graph. They can vary, they can have portions which are square waves um, intermittently for different sorts of readings. So hopefully this gives you a bit of an idea of how analog signals actually work. Let's move on to digital signals. So digital signals are voltage signals which have one of two states. Usually it is a zero volt or a 24 volt signal. Most PLCs have a 0 volt or a 24 volt I.O. on them for their digital inputs and outputs. However, there are different types of PLCs out there. Some do have a 0 volt or a 12 volt digital I.O. But the big industry level standard is definitely 0 volt or 24 volt signals. So this is what you'll see most typically in PLCs in the field. So 
Just another thing we need to talk about in terms of digital signals, there are things that we call rising edges and falling edges. So a falling edge would essentially ramp down the voltage from 24 volt to zero volt almost completely instantly, just due to how electrons flow at the speed of light this sort of voltage drop can happen quite quickly. So just to give you a bit of background on where we will do get digital signals, we could get them from inputs like buttons or proximity switches. So an example of where digital signals will be used is for example in a box sorting application where we will detect the box which comes down a conveyor and passes past the proximity switch and then that will give us a signal to let us know that the box is actually at a certain point on the conveyor belt and then we can obviously do some logic around that to decide what to do next. So just to once again visualize digital signals on a graph we have our voltages and our time. So in this case, you will have a falling edge where it goes from 24 volt all the way down to zero volt almost instantly. That signal remains for a while, then ramps up with a rising edge to 24 volt almost instantly, holds that input for a while and drops off. So from this graph, you can actually see that digital signals are a lot like binary, they're either on or off, true or false. So digital signals are basically just used to indicate states or do some form of detection of an input like a button or a proximity switch. So hopefully this will give you a good idea of what the differences are between digital and analog where analog has got variances and digital signals have two states. We can use these two different types of IO for very different things in the field. Hope this has been useful. See you in the next lecture.